This is Timmy. He's been training hard to make it as a bike racer. He's learned the ways of the peloton and has developed a mean sprint. Lately, thanks to some racy magazines he found by his father's bed, Timmy has become interested in Paris-Roubaix. Over the next few minutes, we'll attempt to address common questions about Paris-Roubaix in a frank and down-to-earth manner. <clears throat> Excuse me. The day began with the usual large but not threatening breakaway. No big deal for the teams who missed out. Look, that guy's already waving goodbye and there's 126 kilometers left. I'm sure Garmin and Sky and BMC are totally psyched to do all the work until the race gets interesting. Heck, they'll even have position at the Forest of Arenberg. Hey, where'd all these quick step guys come from? Still, credit Team Sky for pluck. At 77 kilometers to go, they bounced back from their Arenberg trouncing to send Juan Antonio Flecha up the road. Or, as was more often the case, up a dirt path alongside of it. Fletcher quickly found friends, but a dedicated chase by Omega Pharma, the only headwinds on the course, and confusion and crosswind through a feed zone doomed the effort. Chavanel was next to make an attack, but Europe car's Sebastian Turgeot, freshly recaptured from Fletcher's attack, was unimpressed by the pace and took off solo. Behind them, the peloton swelled as tempo remained low, though BMC's Torhushov still managed to take himself out with an ill-timed bunny hop. Turgeot attacked again, that's three for those of you counting at home, heading into the sector of cobbles at Orche. But seconds later, Tom Bonin and his neon shadow, Pippo Pizzato, decided playtime was over. The duo caught Turgeot, Alessandro Ballon and Nicky Terpstra bridged, and it looked like a race-winning move. And then, sh** got real. Alessandro Ballon chose to hop on Pizzato's wheel, rather than taking his pull after Terpstra and Bonin. Turgeot followed Bellon, Pizzato had words for both of them, and all the while, the two Omega Farmer riders thundered off up the road. A two-man, 50k time trial is daunting enough, but when Terpster couldn't hold his teammate's pace over the next section of cobbles, Bonin didn't hesitate to power on alone. Debate raged over whether the move was bold or suicidal, and Team Sky went immediately to the front to hold the gap. It appeared for a few kilometers like their five-man contingent might just be hanging the three-time winner out to dry. But as the gap continued to run out, and as Fletcher began to make ever more desperate solo bursts, it became clear that it was Tomica who was turning screws in the bunch. Terpstra remained a fly in Sky's ointment, and by the time Ian Stannard finally blew, it was clear the race would be for second. And frankly, that turned out to be a pretty interesting battle. Fletcher, Ballon, and Lars Baum had been making attacks out of the chase group all day. Finally, they managed to get away together for what looked like would be a three-up sprint. But as the trio got tactical on the velodrome, a hard-charging Terpstra and Turgeot caught back on. Turgeot, who spent some time on the boards, immediately latched on to the back of the bunch, high on the banking. When Fletcher launched, Turgeot came over Ballon, but had to coast twice to avoid colliding with the Spaniard. While these pauses allowed Ballon to counter with the gangly man's snap that saw him nip Leif Hosta at the 07 Flanders, it wasn't quite enough, though for my money, there's no way to tell. Yes, that Bonin sure has moxie. But beyond his Superman strength, there are tips even little Timmy can use. The cobbles are no good for pace lining. The group effort can cause crashes, but going solo helps you avoid punctures and spills. Keep well hydrated, if possible using bottles shoved into your hand from the window of a moving car. Don't be afraid to rely on your friends, and above all else, always retain a positive mental attitude.